Welcome once again to Crafty Cafe, a monthly offering from the Pflugerville Public Library, usually held the third Sunday of each month and currently being offered virtually. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, here with another fun craft geared for ages 12 and up. For those who registered through the library calendar, please pick up your material supply kits between October 11th and October 24th. For everyone else watching, we hope you give this project a try. So let's get started with this month's craft, an ombre jar vase. Okay, for this month's Crafty Cafe, all of our supplies handily fit right inside the mason jar that we'll be using to make our jar vases. So if you were one of the folks who signed up and came to pick up supplies, inside your jar um, you have the foam brush, we've got our colors of tissue paper, and since this is an ombre, we've got a darker orange, a slightly lighter orange, and then a very pale, um, almost a little bit more than a salmon color. I'm also including um, one large sheet of white tissue paper in case you'd like to add a base layer. Additionally, in the jar you'll see you get one of the LED candles as well as a small cup of Mod Podge, of Mod Podge that we will use to put our tissue paper onto the outside. I've got all my supplies out and ready. Um, additionally, you'll notice I have a pair of scissors. On the example and the craft that really gave me the inspiration for this that I saw on Pinterest, and it was a leaf pattern, kind of um, very autumnal in its patterning. So if you do want to do a pattern that's a little bit more intricate, you may need um, some scissors to get the design that you really want. However, for this little tutorial, I'm going to try something else that I was really interested in trying because it's tissue paper, it's super easy to tear. So it won't be a problem to just go ahead um, and tear off and pause on what I want. So also in my example, you'll see that this top very pale color is pretty see-through. So now if you want a lot of light to be able to come out the top, I'd recommend just going ahead um, and going with just the layer of the very light colored orange um, because you get a bit of that color and you won't miss anything from underneath. And the same for these darker colors. Well, yes, you get the darker coloration. You can also see through a little bit better. But if you want maybe a little bit more muted um, coloring or to see less through, um, I would recommend doing a layer underneath of just white tissue paper. Um, and this is really going to be more than you need um, to cover the whole jar. And so I'm just going to go ahead and fold this little crease. And again, I'm just going to tear my tissue paper right down. Okay. And with our podge, you um, quick layer on the jar itself. I'm going to go all the way, not all the way on the bottom um, and not really up farther than the um, where the jar lid screws on, um, but I'm just going to do a real light layer of Mod Podge here. Um, and I'm actually not going to wait to go all the way around first because my fingers will stick to it. Um, and second, because that really thin layer is probably going to dry by the time I get all the way around to the other side of the jar. So I'm just going to go ahead and start laying down my layer of white. Then I can just kind of roll it to the side, come back right underneath and get some more decoupage right under there. Do about another inch or so. You may be able to tell from this video that my jar is slightly different from the ones you received. Um, I had ordered slightly taller ones, did the one as an example, and then wanted to make sure that I could get as many out as kits. So this is just an extra um, mason jar that we've had left over from previous crafts. Also, if you've been crafting for us with for more than a year, you may realize that last year in October of 
2020, we actually did a very similar craft. Um, but instead of doing this very specific ombre um, look, we just took patterned napkins and put them on so that it, the pattern was established by the, the napkin that we had. Um, but with this, it gives us this particular version of a craft like this gives us a little bit more um, to where we can make a design kind of uh, very artistically, but maybe a little bit more than uh, to something that we would specifically want. So I'm just all the way around. I don't particularly want to do two layers, but I've got some excess. So again, no worry. I could cut it if I wanted an exactly straight, but I'm really trying to be a little bit more freeform with this version. So I'm just going to tear off the end there. And making sure that I am all the way down there. Um, I'm definitely not trying to be exacting as I put the tissue paper down. There you can see is some um, folds. It's not anything that I'm too worried about. All right, now I have options. I could tear this bottom off. Um, I could go ahead and just put some podge right underneath there. And kind of just push that all right down definitely getting a little bit on my fingers but this walk washes off very easily so I'm not too concerned um, or I'm not wearing a um, apron uh, as you can tell I also don't have anything down on my surface if you are working on a surface you may decide that you want to put uh, something down if you've got some wax paper that would be great because then likely you wouldn't stick to it um, anything that you do get down should come up with some soap and water. I've got a little bit there or I can kind of just rub it right away. All right, and now on to the next colored layer. I am going to start at the top with my lighter color. And again, this length should wrap around the outside. I don't want it to be the full length of the jar. I'm going to go ahead and set my foam brush down. So I'm just going to fold down a couple of inches of my tissue paper and tear off that strip. And I'm not getting a clean tear on this one, but that is kind of the look I'm going for. I don't want a uniform ombre with this version of the craft that I'm doing. I'm trying to go for something that's a little bit more um, natural looking, maybe uh, organic looking, um, hoping for something that kind of looks like uh, mountains maybe. So again, I'm just adding a very light layer of podge on top of the white tissue paper that I've put down there, not pulling too hard because I don't want it to come off completely or rip the tissue paper that's there. So I'm just going to lay down that top layer got a little bit more right around there and I am using the straight edge rather than the torn edge on this top color just because that I can have a little bit easier time getting directly to the top of the jar where the jar kind of dips in at the mouth there and I don't even have to put the podge all the way down to the bottom of the jar because this la layer isn't going to go all the way down again I'm not concerned about kind of folds and creases I feel like they're gonna add to the effect of the jar. All right, a little bit more. And if you see that you're getting a little bit too much podge um, on there and you'd like to give it some time to dry, you may want to go ahead and let each layer dry a slight bit between putting on the next one. That way you don't have um, the very bottom layer taking a very long time to dry or perhaps not, you know, drying a little bit unclear for you. All right, and I once again have reached all the way around. And so I'm just going to tear off my excess there. All right, a little bit over the top, especially at the mouth of the jar so that I know that it's all laying flat. 
And as I expected, the wrinkles just kind of add to it. But I definitely don't want any wrinkles that are folded up and not flush to the jar. So I'm just going over where those are. And I can already tell that the darkness of this, my original without the white underneath, um, is light. it's lighter than what it is here on this jar with the piece of white tissue paper underneath. So I'm gonna let this sit and dry, and dry for just a few minutes and then I'll move on to my next ombre color. And with my second color, I'm gonna end there. I'm just gonna tear off the edge of this and kind of got a very straight edge there. I think I might have um, brought this down a little bit. And since I just placed it on there, I might still be able to. So very gently, I'm gonna pull that up and tear that little corner off. And then there I get something that looks a little bit more organic and wasn't quite so pointy. All right, so there's my lightest color. Give the bottom of it a little bit of a glue down. And go for my final layer. Doing the same process here. I am actually going to fold again so I even have a little bit less to tear. So this might be a slightly more uniform, maybe almost scallop look so that I know both sides here will be the same height. And then there, yeah, see I've got a very scalloped look with that one. Um, I can always pull out a chunk if I feel that I want something that looks a little bit different. That gives me very, very big wave energy there. Okay, so I'm just going to come around with my final layer, making sure that my middle color gets a good coating so it stays down. Not too much on the very lightest color because it is the one that has been has had the most layers on it so I don't want to rip it while I'm doing this see and then there you can see they don't quite match up because that's not what I'm going for with this particular version of this craft I'm just going for a really cool look of the different ombre colors from the very light at the top to the very dark at the bottom of course this is your craft to do with um, and your your when your project you're doing your project you may decide that you want to start with the dark on the top and move to the light on the bottom that is totally up to you almost all the way around here getting just that light layer there coming back to where my darkest color starts oh Oh yeah, I like that because where it goes almost a little bit above. So my ombre isn't just ombre there. All right, so now I'm gonna come down right here where we meet up. And now I'm gonna go back around one additional time so that I get a good cover layer on that bottom darkest color. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and kind of work my way to the top. Brushing towards the top because again, I don't want a whole lot on the very very lightest layer I mostly just need it on this bottom layer here all right and then again once I get my um, layer all the way around I'm move hold it on the inside will make it so that my fingers don't have to sit in the stickiness of the Mod Podge and I'm just gonna come back through with a very light brush down to make sure that I'm not leaving any just piles or puddles. Um, I can see here I've got a little bit of a bit of a something there. I'm just going to go ahead and pick that off. Excellent. Because if I don't now, it will be there forever under the Mod Podge. All right. And so now. My two ombre vases, you can see this one hasn't dried yet, but this one has. And then I'll be able to put my LED candle in there, um, which is really what we would recommend for something like this. We wouldn't re recommend an open flame, especially if you put the lid on, 
it would run out of air it would just go out but those lovely little LED candles will work and will take cute little flickers um, something like this you could even do um, any kind of festive holiday version um, and so there is my kind of more organic if you were hoping to do one exactly like the example um, for this I really did just fold up my tissue paper in several different um, layers there and then cut a leaf shape out of the bottom so I started at the bottom and I just did a real quick little leaving myself a wider base and not coming to an exact point just cut out some leaf shapes there and that's what I use to glue down so either way you decide to get creative and crafty with this project we always love to see it and we and we look forward to um, bringing you another crafty cafe next month